All right, let's talk about Elizabeth Warren. <laughs> uh, look, um, a lot of people might have some issues with this video. I'm going to talk about some problems that I have with Elizabeth Warren. Uh, I don't. Here's my thing, right? I don't really believe Elizabeth Warren is a truly progressive candidate. Uh, I've said this before, which is that I think that Elizabeth Warren is being groomed by the DNC to be their candidate to um, essentially take people away from uh, Bernie Sanders and Tulsi Gabbard. Um, they're, they're going after Tulsi Gabbard in a different way and in, in a variety of other ways, but they know that they can't pull the same uh, level of chicanery twice with Bernie Sanders. So uh, I think they're going to put some chips behind Elizabeth Warren to do that and then try to push some kind of pro- um, truly pro-DNC candidate out there, uh, i.e. a Joe Biden, Kamala Harris, Pete Buttigieg, who were all awful. Um, and, uh, and I think Elizabeth Warren is, is, is that. She's done some good things. Consumer Protection Bureau, solid. I like it. I'm all in for that sort of shit. That's what you should do. Let's hold banks accountable for what they did. Uh, let's reinstate Glass-Steagall. Let's, uh, let's find a way to um, help the American people whenever we have economic failures. Um, that's cool. But uh, So I read this NBC article, and that's, that's where this troubling detail of Elizabeth Warren is coming from. It's from this article from a mainstream outlet. Uh, but not just that, but a lot of progressive outlets have picked up on it as well, which is that Elizabeth Warren has met with Hillary Clinton behind the scenes. That is very troubling. And it should be troubling to every single fucking Democrat out there because uh, Hillary Clinton is not liked. And Hillary Clinton is not going to... And a, and a support... Uh, from Hillary Clinton, a, a thumbs up from Hillary Clinton is not going to help Elizabeth Warren um, defeat Donald Trump. Uh, you know, it's just not going to do it. Hillary Clinton was Donald Trump's opponent, people. Why would you think that that's going to get a bunch of Trumpers that uh, that we can, that that you know can join the side of the the revolution? Why would they go for Elizabeth Warren, who has now apparently gotten endorsed by by who they seem as the, they see as the enemy, and who I frankly see as the enemy as well? Why the fuck would they do that? Uh, basically, what NBC reported was uh, they have no idea how many times uh, Elizabeth Warren and Hillary Clinton have had private conversations with each other. Um, you know, because none of them are, are, are recorded. Uh, they're not really scheduled by uh, Elizabeth Warren staffers. Um, you know, they have each other's phone numbers. So they're texting with each other and shit. Um, you know, like that's, that's something that's going on. You know, they're, they're having little private text conversations. Uh, you, you know... They having slumber parties too. I don't fucking know. Like it seems like they're very buddy buddy with each other. Stephanie Zamorado, a miserable liberal from the Jimmy Dore show, I recently watched a video uh, where she said that Hillary Clinton might be trying to make a play for uh, a Warren vice presidency, where uh, if Warren wins. Hillary Clinton then gets to be the VP uh, of Elizabeth Warren. And uh, and then she gets into office, and then whoopsie, Elizabeth Warren has an, uh, has an accident. Uh, I think it's going to be a little bit more underhanded than that. I'm not saying that, uh, that Steph is wrong. Uh, it's definitely a plausibility. These are all theories. We have no idea what the fuck is actually going to happen. My theory is that she's going to make a play for the Secretary of State again 
so that she can finish what she started under the Obama administration. That's what I think might happen. Um, because I think an Elizabeth Warren presidency would just be Obama part two. Which is probably another reason, uh, and I probably am not the only person that thinks that. I think there's probably a bunch of Trumpers that probably fucking think that, and they don't want Elizabeth Warren to be put into place because that's what they think it is. So, you know, Clinton has come out and said that uh, she has uh, she has not gone unnoticed. Oh, fuck, that's horrifying, isn't it? That's horrifying. She has not gone unnoticed. I'm keeping an eye on you, Elizabeth. How's it going, Liz? Just to let you know that I've got my eye on you. I'm noticing all the things to do. so fucking creepy. That's so fucking creepy to me. I've got my eye on you, Elizabeth. Don't you worry, gal. I'm watching everything you're saying. I'm watching whether you're saying Medicare for all and whose ideas you're taking. I'm watching you, noticing you. Noticing what you're gonna say about breaking up those bikes that I put together. You should not want this person's endorsement or support. If Hillary Clinton was going to come out and be like, I support you, I would be like, please don't. I don't need your endorsement or support. This is awful. I don't like what you stand for. Now, the other thing the NBC report also did was it made Elizabeth Warren sound like she's the only woman running for president. That was her big selling point in the NBC article is she's the woman, man. She's the woman running for president against this this large line of old white dudes. You know, it's Joe Biden, Bernie Sanders, and Elizabeth Warren, the only woman. That's it. She's the only woman on that debate stage. Wait a minute. What about Tulsi Gabbard running? Tulsi Gabbard's a woman, and she's running on, uh, on, on not taking corporate money, on standing by the people, on taking care of these regime change wars, getting rid of them, reallocating funds to help the American people prop up the middle class, get the working class back to order. She's a woman doing all those things. She seems like a woman, and she's not seeking a, 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 a corporate warmonger's support or endorsement. I don't like Kamala Harris, but she's a woman on stage. You're disqualifying uh, Kamala Harris' gender. Amy Klobuchar, who I don't know why the fuck anybody's still supporting Amy Klobuchar. Uh, I'm sure she's a nice person, but Amy Klobuchar is fucking boring as hell. There is no goddamn selling point to Amy Klobuchar. I'm sorry if you're an Amy Klobuchar supporter, but there just isn't. But she is a woman, uh, I believe. Amy Klobuchar sure is. Sure is a woman. I just saw uh, uh, a friend of mine, uh, Kelly, posted a meme. She posted a meme um, with Kamala Harris and Amy Klobuchar dancing, which I always find it uncomfortable to watch politicians dance, by the way. It, it, there's just something unnatural about it, you know? Like, when they dance, it's like, it's just how humans move their bodies. This is how people do it, right? Like, do you remember that video, I think Bush... Bush Jr., like, uh, uh, bad boy Bush, was, he, like, danced to some African thing. It was just so uncomfortable and robotic. It's like, this is how humans do it, right? Regular people move their hips in this gyration. <laughs> like, that's what it's just like, oh, oh, you're trying so hard to, oh, God, it's awful. Just stop. Just stop. You're not a dance person. You're not a dancey person. Oh, it's awful. It's just real bad. But they're both women. They are both women. Uh, the other thing is 71% of their uh, of Elizabeth Warren's supporters and voters are white. And I think she's trying to grab... Uh, by, by getting the Clinton endorsement, she's trying to grab uh, a larger contingent of women voters, especially uh, women of color. Um, and, uh, and she's up against the, you know... Uh, Bernie Sanders who fucking who won't say that he marched with MLK why won't you say that just say it to be like dude I have been in the fucking civil rights fight since like the dawn of the civil rights movement 
I have been supporting it, and I've been on board with that shit. Just say that. Why can't he say that? That would that would spike his black supporters. And but Elizabeth Warren is trying to grab them. Elizabeth Warren is trying to grab the women of color vote from uh, by get trying to get that Clinton endorsement. And look, if you're a person of color, there's no fucking way you should be supporting Clinton. The three steps rule. Did you call them super predators? Criminalizing marijuana and supporting the prison industrial complex. And if you're if you're a person in the LGBTQ community, if you're a woman part of the LGBTQ community, you should not be supporting Clinton either because she was pro pro doma. And then only after it became a popular movement did she come out and was just like, you know what? I don't see what's wrong with it now that everybody felt bored with it. Don't support a woman like that. Clinton, uh, okay, so this is, a, this is a big one, is Clinton has controls of uh, the delegates and superdelegates. She has influence over them. That, and that was said by someone in charge of the DNC in the state of Massachusetts. So, uh, that, they, they said that. They said that, of course, Elizabeth Warren is making a play for uh, talking to Hillary Clinton because uh, Hillary Clinton has uh, uh, influence over the delegates and the superdelegates, especially in, the sta- in, in her own state. That's fucking crazy. Why would you support an organization like the DNC when they are clearly, clearly stacking the game against against real progressives? That you have to go to someone like Hillary Clinton who lost, who fucking lost against Trump. She fucking lost against Trump and you want that person's endorsement and that person's support. Why? Why do you think that's going to help you fucking win against this guy? Why are you seeking the endorsement of the loser? That is fucking nuts. This is this is sort of another point of like god damn it like I want to I want to low key have you at least at least somewhere you know like if we had ranked choice voting you know it would be Tulsi Bernie Yang although Yang and Bernie might switch uh and then and then I want to have number 4 be Elizabeth Warren not the grapefruit I picked up out of the produce aisle Number four shouldn't be... I think I'm going to write my wife in. Like, number four should be a candidate that's running that actually gives me a reason to vote for them. Okay? Here's one of the reasons why why Elizabeth Warren... I'm having a real tough time putting Elizabeth Warren as number four on my list. She is willing to take corporate and PAC money and dark money... And, and she and, and this was a TYT interview that the clips are going all over the place in the progressive media world where she talks about how, you know, in the primaries, I'm all for running a grassroots effort because it's the primaries. Once you're running in the generals, because you're running against the Republicans, you got to start taking corporate money. You got to start taking PAC money and dark money because that's what the Republicans are doing. Guess what she just fucking said there? I'm no better than the Republican. I'm no better than them. I'm no better than them, so why the fuck wouldn't I do the same shit that they are? Why the fuck wouldn't I take the same money that they are? I'm not better than these Republicans. I used to be one of them. I should know I'm not better than them. What the fuck? How can you claim to be, you know, this this champion of the people? You just got endorsed by the Working Families Party, which is a whole fucking sham, by the way. You claim that you are for people. And yet you are willing to take corporate money. That you're willing to stand by corporations and not by people. And you're just like, yeah, Republicans do it. So should we. That's not a fucking good enough excuse. If you want to be better than Republicans, then stand by the people. Be a representative of the citizens of this country by standing with them and not the corporations that are trying to, 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 to disregard them, to treat them as second class, to see them as walking sacks of money. 
Holy fuck. Yeah, I'm going to take corporate money in the general election. Fuck. No wonder the DNC is just like, yeah, yeah, yeah let's let's low key put some put some funnel some funds behind her. And Elizabeth Warren does take corporate money, by the way. She's not fully grassroots. She's not fully uh, uh, supported just 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 by people, right? Like I'm pretty sure she takes money from uh, corporations. There's a couple that, that that were listed, like some hospitals and stuff like that. Same hospitals that have funded Kamala Harris and Beto O'Rourke. I mean, this is who she really is, right? And she's going to show us that in the generals. She's going to show us that she's not really fighting on our side, that she's fighting for the side of corporations. And she's totally fucking good with it. Totally fucking good with it. The Republicans are chewing it too! Here's the reality that we need to face. That no matter how many corporate donors she gets, how many super PACs she takes, how many fucking dark, how much dark money she can grab, uh, the second Trump calls her Pocahontas, it's over. It's done. Whatever momentum she gained from possibly talking to uh, Trump voters that are now on the fence because Trump hasn't kept up his end of the bargain. You know, he hasn't really helped uh, the American people. He hasn't really done anything to uh, boost up the economy. And a lot of people are like, well, the stock market's doing really well. Wall Street's doing really well. Yeah, the stock market is basically a popularity contest to see how great rich people are doing. So rich people are doing awesome. Uh, Working class people, poor people in America, struggling Americans, not doing great. You know, unemployment's down. Yeah, it's because a bunch of people are working two to three jobs. That doesn't mean unemployment's down. That means that we need fucking better jobs. That's what that actually means. But the second he calls her Pocahontas, all the people that see Trump not doing a great job are gonna fucking latch right onto it and be like, this is the guy, man. I fucking, I remember now. I remember why I liked him. And because you're not gonna have a great retort to it. Because that's not how Elizabeth Warren fucking operates. And if she does, if she does start retorting to him in that childish, petulant way that he does, it's going to come off as unauthentic and and that you're just stealing his tactics and you're still not going to lose. So the second he does it, game over. It's done. I don't think she has a chance if he, if he goes that route. And he will go that route. Why the fuck wouldn't he? She started. She is starting to, you know, pair Jay Inslee, who I, who I guess dropped out of the race. Um, he had some really good ideas on climate change, and he was he was sort of the advocate for climate change um, in the Democratic debates. He was sort of the voice championing for it, um, and uh, and she started to parrot his his beliefs. So she's going to start gaining momentum on Jay Inslee people. And I think what that's what that also might be is her making a play to grab Jay Inslee to make him the head of the EPA under a Warren administration, which not a bad idea, not a bad idea. That guy seems to be really passionate about climate change. That seems to be his flagship issue. Not a bad idea. Here's here's the thing. There there was a Rolling Stone article that basically said why Elizabeth Warren should be or could be president, the reality of it, right? And one of the things they brought up was in her speeches um, at, at these at these events that she's running, she talks about uh, the influence of money in politics, the influence of uh, reforming campaign finance, uh, of, of getting money out of politics, of how um, how bad that really is. You know, the 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 downfall that it can have to American politics by by having money in politics. That's something that she presses forward in her speeches um, in uh, at these at these big events that she does. Right? How can she make that claim and then go on something like TYT and say that she's going to take corporate money in the generals because the Republicans do it? 
How can you claim to be somebody that is, uh, that to, to your supporters and to your people, lie to their face like that? Corporate money is a problem. We have to get money out of politics, this blah, blah, and all, and all this shit. And then go, yeah, I think I'm going to take, uh, I'm going to take a bunch of uh, corporate PAC money. Uh, you know, money from corporations and money from PACs and dark money uh, because I have to defeat the Republicans. It's about winning. No, it's about it's about being for the, there for the people. And if you're a candidate that's there for the people, if you truly run on a grassroots campaign and start matching corporate donors, guess what? You just prove that the power and the vo- uh, uh, the, the power that the voice of the people have is just as strong as corporate uh, as a few corporations. That's what you just proved. And I think we can do it, and I think we can prove it. But we can't prove it if if someone like Elizabeth Warren is just going to take a bunch of corporate money uh, and then, and you know, do the platitude song and dance of, well, we got to get money out of politics. As she catches a, catches a check from the pharmaceutical industry. As she catches, catches a check from the oil industry. You can't say you're anti-corruption and then go on being corrupt. Here's a positive, though. Uh, she did apologize for the for the Pocahontas, the, what ended up being the Pocahontas incident. Uh, she did apologize for uh, the native thing, for the uh, for for the blood test thing, um, and uh, and she did it by uh, co-authoring a bill with uh, Representative Deb Holland. Uh, I hope I'm pronouncing that properly. If I'm not pronouncing that properly, let me know. Uh, hit it in that. Hit, hit the hit the uh, uh, fanatics in the in the comments. Deb Holland, Representative Deb Holland, who is an Indigenous uh, representative from New Mexico. She's one of the uh, one of two Indigenous members of Congress, uh, which is very exciting. It's very exciting to see that happen. Um, so that's cool. Um, I, I like that a lot. That's great. I'm glad that you apologize, right? Here's the fun part about this, right? When when Elizabeth Warren does it, everybody's like, oh, look at this, she fucking apologized. What a great person. Elizabeth Warren, DNC darling. Apologize for having a major gaffe in her past. Apologize for making a mistake in her past by saying that she is a specific percent native, henceforth, she deserves the right, you know, she's a, she's the voice of, of, uh, of, of, of indigenous Americans across this country. What a great thing. Yet, corporate media and the DNC are still trying to use that uh, Tulsi Gabbard had some anti-gay things in her past when she was a teenager. When she was a fucking teenager, she had, she was part of her dad's conservative Hindu activism against the LGBTQ community. She's apologized twice, and all of her legislative efforts uh, are to bring up um, uh, equality for the LGBTQ community, to make sure that there's no workplace discrimination, to make sure that there's no discrimination of any kind for that society. And and fucking the DNC and everybody else will still continue to bring that same fucking issue up. Like, you were anti-gay once in your life. You, uh, there was a point where you did it. You were anti-gay. But but now that uh, Elizabeth Warren's apologized, nobody will fucking bring that shit up ever. Until the Trump campaign, until the Trump campaign, because I bet you the Trump campaign will bring it up. Bigger point that I'm trying to make here is that there is a bunch of hypocrisy based on who you support. And there's a lot of favoritism. Because here's the thing, Elizabeth Warren might not be my favorite candidate, and Tulsi Gabbard might be my favorite candidate, but the fact that she did apologize through a piece of legislation, I'm going to accept it. And I'm going to say, you are trying to redeem yourself from a big gaffe that you made, and you are trying to move forward as a better person. I'm going to give you that. What, what I'm going to ask for is all of those mainstream liberals that listen to MSNBC and, and CNN and all the fucking propaganda that comes out from them, if you are going to accept that Elizabeth Warren has made a true apology to the indigenous community via this bill co-authored by one of the rep- uh, indigenous representatives in Congress, 
you're going to accept that apology. You accept Tulsi Gabbard's apology via her actual apologies that she's given and her record. Because I'm not showing favoritism in this moment. So I ask that you not show favoritism and accept the apology uh, on an equal level. And I hope, I hope my mainstream liberal friends can do it. I hope they can do it. It's a big, it's a big point of, uh, uh, it just bugs the shit out of me. It annoys the fuck out of me when I, whenever I hear that sort of stuff. Uh, this is a weird thing that, that I read in the article too, the Rolling Stone one. Her gun rights, um, are, are kind of wrapped around a feminist way of looking at gun rights. Uh, I'm not sure if this is, this is the best way to look at this, this issue. Um, she, she talks about a, addressing, uh, gun crimes through the lens of hypermasculinity to, to de-radicalize men, essentially, um, in this country that commit a lot of the gun, gun crimes. Uh, look, I, I, the NRA won't let there be gun statistics, but I'm pretty sure women have shot men too. Um, and that still falls under the problem of uh, responsible gun ownership. Um, being responsible and understanding what that weapon really is. Um, and to me, you know, uh, the Second Amendment is a right, that's great. Um, but learn how to use your weapon, folks. I'm not a gun owner, but I, but my father-in-law used to own a gun store and, and we've had a lot of conversations and even for him, the big problem is, hey, learn how to use your weapon. Learn how to take care of it. Learn what it really can do um, and be responsible with that weapon. That's, I think, what the gun rights and gun reform issue should be about. Uh, it's a killing tool. Are you responsible enough to own a killing tool? I think I think if I generalize humanity a little bit more, uh, I would say that we are not responsible enough to use butter knives, and we should uh, master that first uh, before we are responsible enough to use a weapon that can kill a bunch of people very quickly. Uh, that's my thought. But I get it, Second Amendment. Here, here's my final thoughts on on uh, uh, Elizabeth Warren here. I want to like her. I really do, right? And my wife and I were talking about this. Uh, 2020, here, here's, the, here's the deal. Okay, before I go into what my wife and I were talking about. Here's the deal. 2020 might be the first election that I uh, get to vote in. Um, and that's exciting. Um, but... If the Democratic Party has not given me a candidate that is worth voting for, that is actually going to stand by people, um, that is going to prop up this country, and that is going to uh, move the economy in the direction uh, of, of compassion, understanding, and caring rather than uh, competitive edge and beating the, beating the American middle class down. If you do not give me a, a candidate that is worth voting for, then you have not earned my vote. Uh, I will not tolerate people coming up and being like, Hillary Clinton or Elizabeth Warren or Kamala Harris deserve your vote. No, they do not. If they do not prove to me that they have earned it. That's where I stand with it. You gotta earn my vote. Corporations... And, and getting funded by corporations, getting funded by PACs, really kind of shows that you're not ready to earn my vote. Sorry. But my wife and I were talking about it is, would we vote for a Democratic ticket? How would, what would be the, what would be the way that we would vote for an Elizabeth Warren Democratic ticket, knowing what we know now about the Elizabeth Warren campaign and the problems that we have with it? Um... Liz Bernie, Liz Bernie would be one that's that's very that's the lowest of the low that I'm willing to possibly accept. Uh, I'd have to do some real thinking about it. Uh, Liz Tulsi, same thing. I'd have to do some real, real hard thinking about um, being able to hit that ticket, knowing what I know about Elizabeth Warren and what she said and what she's willing to do, how much she's willing to sell out. 
that would kind of be it. But if you think you're going to try to bully me into voting for Elizabeth Warren, think again. Uh, you got to earn my vote. You got to earn my vote. Hey, thanks for watching this video. Uh, this is part of a little series I do called Road Reflections, where I talk to you while I'm on tour uh, about the current socio-political environment, current news stories, uh, debates, that sort of stuff that I don't get to talk about on my podcast, Taboo Table Talk or Forkful of Noodles. It's a little bit looser. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this clip. If you guys enjoyed it, uh, you can find the full episodes on my Facebook page. Uh, you can go like Krish Mohan, uh, social vigilante and comedian. And uh, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. Uh, share this out if you enjoyed it. Um, and another way to help uh, see more regular content is by becoming a patron over at patreon.com slash Thanks again, guys, and we'll see you on the road.